Hey guys, what's up? It's Fern. Once again, coming at you with my herbal tea in hand. Um, I hope that you are all doing so well. Thank you for joining me for another planty video. So today, I thought I would do a kind of summer wrap-up video featuring the plants that I think have had the best growing season, that I'm the most proud of their growth, just the plants that have done really well throughout the spring and summer just to kind of close out the chapter on summer, you know? So I have, I think, nine plants to share with you today and I'm very excited about that. But before I show them off to you, I'm gonna give a huge shout out to today's sponsor. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Blinkist, which is an app that has quickly become my latest obsession. I don't think anything has ever like fully become integrated into my morning routine so quickly. So Blinkist is an app that helps you understand the most important things and the key concepts from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts in just 15 minutes. The thing that I really like about their format though is that it's not just a summary of the book, it's actually like engaging and fun to listen to and they're really good at just pulling out the key concepts and making them digestible. They have so many amazing titles. Like I said, I've been listening to them every single morning. It's like the perfect amount of time for when I'm getting ready in the morning. One of my favorites that I've recently listened to is called The Power of Fun by Katherine Price. And it talks about just how important playfulness and fun is to our well-being. And I think that that's so important and really overlooked in today's day and age. So I loved that one. I'm like scrolling through all the ones that I've listened to right now. There's also a short cast called The Happiness Lab, which I'm going through right now. I'm about halfway finished. It's a series of episodes. It's kind of like a short form of a podcast and they cover a lot of really interesting topics too. I think my favorite episodes from them so far have been For Whom the Alarm Clock Tolls and How to Kick Bad Habits. Another really cool new feature that Blinkist has is called Blinkist Connect and it allows every premium account user to share their account with somebody else. So it's like a two for one. You can share it with your friend or your partner. You guys can discuss the titles that you've listened to together. This app is so up my alley, you guys. I'm so excited that they're sponsoring this video because I genuinely just love them so much. If you think it's something that you would love too, you can get a seven day free trial and 25% off of a Blinkist annual premium with the promo link down below. It'll be in the description box for you. Huge thank you to Blinkist for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now let's hop into the plants. Okay, so the first plant is none other than my Monstera Albo. Now I had to put this plant in this video because I just cannot believe how big she is now. Oh my goodness, I'll have to put her down so you can see how tall she is compared to me. Like this plant is almost as tall as me now, which is absolutely crazy. Okay, this is a reel that I took in mid-June. This is where I was adding the newest extension on. So throughout July and August, this plant grew up the rest of that, the moss bowl, like all the way to the top of that extension, which is crazy. I will show you the most recent leaves. This is the newest one right here with some nice marbling variegation happening down here. Really big leaf too. And then this was the one prior with the sectoral variegation, which is holding up really well. And as you can see, she is working on a new leaf currently. This plant just blows my mind with its rate of growth. I feel like it's always pushing out a new leaf. And I guess because I've had the Thai constellation for longer, which is a notoriously slow grower, I was just really surprised at how fast this Monstera Albo does grow for me and very, very thankful for it as well. Um, she's almost at the very top of the moss pole and there's two extensions on here. I am going to be propagating her soon, which I'm really excited about because I've never propagated variegated Monstera before. Um, I'm sure it'll go well. Well, let's hope. But that'll just be a new fun project for me to try out. So I'm really excited for that. But yeah, she's just massive. Um, it's so hard to show like <laughs> with this type of plant, it's so hard to show the full thing on the screen. But yeah, she's really, really done the most this past year. This moss pole is so sturdy, by the way. Um, this is a Trifolia self-watering pole. If anyone's interested, I can link them into the, in the description box, but they're so perfect for large, tall plants like this. They have a really great base and they just hold up really well. Yeah, I just love her so much and I will definitely be filming the process of propagating her whenever I do that. So that'll be an upcoming video sometime in the future. 
Okay, the next plant that I'm going to be talking about is my variegated Maranta. Now this, I, this specifically stands out in my mind because I filmed a repotting of this plant like, I don't know, sometime right before spring and it was very small, it was not doing well, I repotted it and it just took off. So this plant has grown like a weed over the summer. If I'm being completely honest, I've definitely underwatered it a couple times, so we do have some crispy tips. But other than that, she's so full, so lush. She bloomed multiple times. She bloomed for like a couple months straight. It was crazy. She's just so beautiful. I love variegated Maranta, and I feel like she's always growing. Like, there's just always like new leaves that are starting to come out, and they come out so cute. Just like little like rolls of paper or something. Like, look at that. I love it. Every leaf is like a surprise too. I am going to be giving this plant a little bit of a haircut soon because I'm going to be sending some cuttings for a trade, um, but that'll probably be good for her and I do see roots coming out of the bottom. I don't know if she needs to be repotted again or what, but I am going to do a little bit of a cleanup on her within the next few days here. I'm excited about that and I probably should find a new spot for her too because she's really just like squished into the shelf in my bedroom. Anyways, yeah, just wanted to give an update on how large she has grown over the past few months. Okay, we're having a little angle change for the next one, and that is because she is right over here, my beautiful Monster Dubia. I wasn't going to move her out of her spot in my bedroom, but I figured I would, and then I can pop her in the shower because every once in a while I like to really flush through the pot, give her a really extra thorough watering because most of the time I just water her in her spot. Anyways, I wanted to show you how big she is, and this is a really easy plant for me to like gauge how fast it's growing because I do this little growth chart thing. I'll have to bring you closer and show you in a moment, but... I do this little growth chart where a lot of the leaves like grow over, but um, I mark the months where that plant had grown to. So in May, she was here. So she's grown this much, which is pretty crazy. And considering the leaves have sized up so much as well, I'm really, really happy with that. This is actually another plant that I'm anticipating um, chopping soon and I'm so excited for this project. I'm gonna wait until she gets to the very top and then I'm going to be propagating. Somebody actually messaged me the other day and uh, said that with theirs they put moss over the the roots of the leaves that they were gonna be chopping and then put saran wrap around it. So I think I'm gonna try that method again. I'll probably film when I do this. But it is just going to be so cool to start over from the bottom with these bigger leaves. I'm honestly just like so, so stoked for it. Every leaf we're getting closer to getting fenestrations, which I just think is going to be the craziest thing ever. Okay, so I'll take you a little closer now. So this is what the leaves at the top are looking like. This is actually a really great opportunity because I never really get to show you guys um, super close up this plant just because of where it's normally living. It's kind of hard to get at. The leaves feel really cool too. Like they have a really nice texture. They're sparkly. Um, I love the silver, of course. And it's so cool to see um the roots clinging onto the plank do you see that like how incredible this plant honestly blows my mind you guys i'm so glad that i got it i just randomly got it um in like i guess like kind of a trade thing just like a small tiny cutting a couple of years ago yeah i just cannot believe how far we've come Oh man, so yeah, you can see how small the leaves were down here even just in may That's how big the leaves were um, compared to, actually, no, that's not even, this is, I have two separate plants here, um, so it's kind of confusing, oh, that leaf is getting bent, it's kind of confusing, um, this is a whole separate vine growing up here, so in May, the main plant would have been this big, so I'll show you compared to my hand, and now we are this big, just so beautiful, yeah, this is definitely one of my pride and joys, and I never really see a lot of other people appreciating this plant, so I just really have to hype her up and like let y'all know how fun this plant is to grow. Okay, we're back over here now, and the next one that I have to show you is kind of going to represent a whole group of plants in my home that have grown really well this summer. 
but it is my string of hearts representing all of the string ofs that I have been putting a lot of effort propagating and like staying on top of watering and everything, um, trying to get them to grow fuller and longer this growing season. So I'm just gonna be showing this string of hearts. This is just the regular original edition string of hearts, which has obviously grown a ton. She's very tangled, but I'm kind of just embracing the tangled vibe. Um, way less stressful <laughs> that way, but she's so long. Like, oh my goodness, you guys, look at how long she is. So I decided to just show this one because I'm actually going to be um, releasing a video within the next couple of weeks, probably, uh, showcasing all of my trailing plants, like a trailing plant collection video. So you'll see the rest of them in that video, but I, I think that this one is quite impressive, so I just wanted to show it. And this was all started from propagations that I took uh, right before the spring. So yeah, I love string of plants. I love trailing plants in general, but string of just give like a really like delicate, but also just kind of like wild look, especially when they do start growing, just doing their own thing and getting tangled and growing however they like. I repotted this recently too, and you can see it's so satisfying to see all the little roots in there. I love that. I've never grown a string of in like these clear pots before, but I actually really like that. I'm also thinking of doing a string ofs care video. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. I think I've already harped on my main tip quite a bit, but I do just kind of want to have like a focused video on that topic. Anyways, that's it for string ofs. Okay, this next one I show all the time, but I just couldn't not put it in this video. I just couldn't, like I have to show it. It's probably been my best grower this season, year, whatever. Dun, dun, dun. It is of course my philodendron splendid. Why am I, I'm like crouching. I need to raise the camera up. That's better. Okay, yes, my philodendron splendid. Probably my favorite plant right now. Um, I just, I'm speechless with how much it has grown. I'll insert a photo of what it looked like uh, one year ago. It, it kind of grew like, I don't know, it was kind of slow to start off and then it kind of grew steadily. But spring and summer, you guys, oh my goodness. I have seen, especially even within just the last months, um, or even within like the last three weeks of August, I saw so much growth in this and it is just so satisfying to watch. These are extremely easy philodendron to grow, very hardy, very fast growing. Um, yeah, I just, I highly recommend philodendron splendid. It is so phenomenal. Look, we even have a new leaf that is coming out again already. This one just came out, you guys. Obviously the biggest leaf so far, it's so crazy. I feel like you see these really big versions of these plants and just like just big versions of philodendron in general on Instagram and I've never really been able to grow my plants that big just because of different things like me moving and just it takes time to um, grow plants out and I feel like I'm finally getting to the point where I'm seeing some of these larger leaves obviously this is nothing compared to how big this plant can actually get but it's still just like so cool to see it get bigger than just like the little juvenile leaves I'll back up so you can see the whole thing I'm gonna be extending the pole very soon um, so I'm gonna add probably another foot onto it and then once he climbs to the top of that then I will be doing a chop but yeah, I love him so much. Of course, I just couldn't do this video without him, you know? Okay, we are shifting gears a little bit, but this is one that I was just not expecting to grow so much and so easily for me. I only got this probably, oh gosh, when did I get this? Sometime near the beginning of summer, I think. Anyways, it is my Begonia Amphioxus and like, look at this thing. This is a whole little tree now. I will say it was already like a full, a quite full plant when I received it, um, but it's just grown so much in only the few months that it's been in my care. And it's been so easy, like remarkably easy, you guys. If you are wanting to get into these more like uncommon, um, obscure looking begonia, I definitely recommend that you get your hands on the Amphioxus because yeah, this thing, I, I mean, I honestly treat it basically like the rest of my tropicals, which I can't really treat many of my begonia like that, but this one just seems to like withstand um, being able to like dry out a little bit more. It tolerates a bit lower humidity. 
yeah, it's just been so easy. I'm very impressed by it. Uh, I do need to, well, I need to give it a new steak. It still is on its little fork, which is kind of funny. That's just how it came to me. I got it in a trade and I was so, so grateful and just like not expecting like such an established plant through that trade. But yeah, it is so beautiful. Like, look at, look at this leaf. Look at how red that is. Oh man, just so pretty. She bloomed for me this summer as well. It's truly just been a dream to grow and also perfect fall like spooky season plant because it is so like strange and toxic looking. So might be the perfect time of year to get your hands on one of them. Yeah, you'll definitely be seeing me feature this more going into um, the next couple months here. Okay, next we have my lovely philodendron micans, which I feel like I haven't shown in a while. It used to grow hanging off of my bed frame and then I moved it to my Wally Grow plant wall area, um, which it actually seems to really like. But just because it's like less within impeding in my space, I just tend to feature it less, I guess. But fret not, it has been growing so well. It's doing phenomenal. Um, I'm super happy with the progress that I've made. This is another one that I have been oof, putting effort into chopping, propping, and then like replanting the propagations into here to just like get a fuller plant. Yeah, the leaves are just so pretty on philodendron micans. I love it so much. Look at that, like so smooth and velvety. I am gonna be chopping it again soon because look at how long it is, you guys. It's honestly like, it's probably almost, well, it's probably about four feet long right now, but it's just this one spindly vine that's giving it a lot of length. So uh, I am gonna be chopping and then just trying to create a more full pot. Like I said, that's the goal with this plant. Um, that's the goal with, I guess, like most of my trailing plants in my collection. But yeah, she's doing really well, so I just had to show her. I was just noticing the other day um, just how much she has grown, especially considering she's not getting a ton of light on the wall either. Like this really does seem to be a philodendron that thrives in less light, at least in my experience, because when I had this on my south facing window, uh-uh, that was bad news bears. But pulled back, getting it just like ambient light, she loves it. Okay, so of course I had to feature a Hoya and I was really like putting some thought into which Hoya I felt like had the most impressive growth over the past few months and um, I was thinking of featuring my Williniana that I have recently been talking about but that kind of grows really well all the time um, and the one that has really just taken off for me this summer definitely has to be my Hoya Caudata Sumatra. Um, before this summer, honestly, this thing only had like a few leaves up at the top here and she had shot out these vines, but nothing was really happening or like the odd leaf would kind of like try to come in. Okay, so I went back to find footage of this plant and this was the best footage I could find. This is from January 28th and this plant was only two leaves, you guys. It was only two leaves for the longest time. It just looks so naked. I can't believe how many leaves it's put on during the growing season. But now I feel like I have like a little plant. Yeah, she is turning into a full little plant. And I love her so much. I love the markings on the leaves. I love how the leaves are fuzzy, um, especially the baby leaves coming in. They're so fuzzy and cute. My biggest goal with this plant is to have it bloom for me one day because I would die to see Hoya Carada blooms in person. They're so like fuzzy. Actually, someone in my Discord chat described the blooms perfectly, perfectly the other day and she called them feathery. And I was like, that's like the perfect description for them. They do, they just look very feathery. And I love anything hairy, fluffy, feathery, whatever be it, I'm here for it. So yeah, I would love to see that happen one day, but for now I'm just appreciating all the foliage that's been coming in. And it's nice to just spotlight her a little bit because I feel like I don't give her a lot of attention. She's kind of just like shoved into the cabinet. So yeah, this is her, her moment to shine. Okay, and then last but not least is one that has really started to mature for me. And that is, of course, my philodendron painted lady. Okay, first of all, let's just show how big she's gotten. Oh my goodness, I can hardly fit her in on the screen. This plant has grown so much and I'm really impressed because I was a little, I don't know if, I, if concerned is the right word, but I was 
thinking that she wouldn't really like grow as well or maybe give me like as mature leaves ever since I took her out of the Ikea greenhouse cabinet. Like she doesn't get like a ton of light or anything like that compared to those like perfectly curated conditions. When she was in the cabinet, she was giving me these, like these are all cabinet leaves, these nice like wide, um, more mature looking leaves. And then I took her out of the cabinet and she started giving me you know, a little bit smaller, a little bit less mature of a shape. Um, and I was like, okay, like that's fine. I can deal with that. But then within the past month or so, you guys, she has been giving me these beautiful, wide, large leaves. And oh my goodness, I am so happy about it. I love the look of Painted Lady once it gets bigger. I mean, I think it's, I think it's, I love it honestly in any stage like it's just such a beautiful striking plant I do feel like this is one you kind of have to see in person because I didn't think it was anything special until I got someone in person so hopefully it translates onto the screen but um, her yellow variegation her pink petioles and stems like she just looks so incredible so this is the newest leaf obviously as you can see it is a lighter green it is still hardening off and she is working on another one right there and as you can see she has grown past her moss pole and i was humming and hawing trying to decide whether i was going to chop her and start a new plant or whether i was going to extend the pole or i just really wasn't sure what to do but i am going to be extending the pole so i'm going to be um receiving an extension soon and i can pop that on top of here and attach this and it can just continue to grow upwards i'm so curious to see how tall and how large i can grow this plant out to be yeah i just love her so much i will show this plant off whenever i get a chance because i'm just so proud of her all right, guys, I guess that's going to be it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing some of my best growing plants of the growing season. It was such a pleasure to share them with you. Also, don't forget to check out Blinkist if you are like me and you love learning new things and consuming knowledge in an entertaining way. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to chat with you. And don't forget to like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!